I've got to admit, I'm running a little behind today because my behind was running a little bit yesterday. I know, I know, nobody wants to hear about me getting a late night case of the emergency dribble shits, but sometimes that's where the fucking story starts, so that's where we're going to have to start. So buck up, put on your mature enough to talk about these things pants, and let me tell you about my diarrhea. Now, to be clear, it wasn't just diarrhea. I, I got a hold of a shrimp cocktail that didn't agree with me before dinner yesterday, and it was it was having its fucking revenge. My ass is blasting like it's trying to put out a fire. I'm puking so hard, it's using my nostrils as overflow channels. I'm purging sweat like a beer at the beach. Like, like if there was such a thing as ear vomit, my ears would have been throwing up. And as I'm sitting there, I suddenly feel a timeless kinship with whatever ancient Jew 6,000 years ago added and no shellfish to the list of commandments. Like, yeah, shrimp are delicious. Lobster's amazing. The only thing better to eat than crab is drugs. But I can see how one time going through that agony would have left anybody with the authority to do so to say, and no shellfish ever for anyone for fuck's sake. How is there still more shit in me? Hell, I'm an atheist, and I wasn't altogether sure the gods weren't punishing me last night. And, and if I thought convincing that, that some god that I would never let anybody eat shrimp again would appease them somehow... That's, I'd have done whatever it fucking took. And all of that got me to thinking, because, you know, when you're shuttering your way through an all holes evacuation for three and a half hours in the middle of the night, you got some time to ponder. Anyway, so I was thinking about how my violent diarrhea was kind of like Greg Locke in a lot of ways. Right. Like, like, hear me out. Back in the ancient Jewish days, this whole deontological thou shalt attitude was probably the way to go, right? It only takes a couple of members of your tribe dying from a shellfish allergy before you say, hey, let's just rule those motherfuckers out altogether. I don't care how delicious they are. It only takes a few times of people junk rotten and falling off in large groups before you say, hey, let's stick to one fuck buddy at a time. But the reason it makes sense is because it's being implemented in a time of great ignorance and not the voluntary kind that we have now. Of course, when you try to solve your problems with thou shalt, it gives rise to several problems. The first, of course, is that by making something taboo, you forestall any real understanding of that thing. If, if God hates it when we fuck with shellfish, you're way less inclined to fuck around with shellfish and find out why. Another obvious one is that it removes the action from the consequence, right? Like, like socially enforced monogamy and taboos about premarital sex may have arisen because of paternity questions and venereal disease, but in a time of paternity tests and condoms, those same taboos only serve to exacerbate the problems in a sort of like kind of self-perpetuating intellectual turf war. Now, now, obviously, we don't have room in the diatribe for an exhaustive list of all the reasons that you shouldn't get your morals from the dictates of Bronze Age mystics or in the form of thou shalt. But there's one more that I want to emphasize, and that's how childish it is. Right. Because by their very definition, commandments are black and white. Right. Like we can quibble all you want about, you know, what taking the Lord's name in vain actually means. But once we've settled on an answer, the imperative not to do so is absolute. There's no degree. There's no exception. There are a series of immutable and overly simple rules. And when you teach people that the means of confronting moral dilemmas that's preferred by the God of the universe is a series of thou shalt, you're also teaching them to enforce their rules in the same way. It's no wonder, then, that the Christian solution to the problems that they perceive in modern society is always to ban something. Kids these days not behaving in a way that comports with your outmoded worldview? Ban their music, ban their fashion, ban their books, ban their video games. Kids drifting away from your religion? Why, I, I guess you could try to re-examine your teachings with an emphasis on the major concerns of the generation you're trying to reach, or you could just make a big-ass bonfire and burn Twilight books. It's this simplified sense of morality that gives rise to so many of our problems with religion. Their inability to recognize nuance doesn't quite guarantee that they'll always have the dumbest possible take on every moral issue, but it sure as hell gets them close. Right? I mean, there are plenty of moral absolutes that don't require any real nuance, but those aren't the kind of things that give rise to moral dilemmas. Moral dilemmas, by their very nature, generally only arise when there are competing moral imperatives. I, I mean... Fucking Christians can craft them out of whole cloth from misunderstandings and an out-of-control persecution complex. But for the larger society, moral dilemmas only arise when there's a gray area to argue about. Exactly the kind of place where thou shalt thinking is at its least useful. Anyway, obviously that's not the only way that Greg Locke's religious philosophy is a lot like involuntarily evacuating your bowels while throwing up. But the only other important one for the purposes of this diatribe is that it's something that needs to be flushed when it's all over. <laughs> 